mean absolute stupidity? It says that science involves comforting our absolute stupidity. That kind of stupidity is the essential fact inherent in our efforts to push our way into the unknown. So what, it, like, what I thought it said is like, if we don't push ourselves to discover new things, then we're just gonna be like, oh, we feel comfortable and we're always gonna feel smart. But if we feel that stupidity, then we're gonna be like, oh, I wanna discover new things. We're always talking about how we want kids to think critically and think at a higher level and be more analytical. And when students are talking to each other about big ideas, I think that's when it's really happening. Somebody tell me what a Socratic seminar looks like or how it's kind of different from a regular class discussion. You share your thoughts with others based on facts from the text or something? Oh, really good. Okay, so you're sharing your thoughts. The first thing I do to prepare students for being in the Socratic seminar is to build up the discussion and let them know that this is a grown-up discussion and it's something different and special that we're going to be doing. You refer to the text so it's based on what you read and you're always quoting from the text. In the beginning, the important thing is to have lots of interpretive questions and also just questions to move the discussion along. In a large class, I like to do what we call a fishbowl in which every student has a partner. One partner participates in the seminar and the other partner listens to them and scores them. And it makes it a little bit smaller, a little bit more intimate, and a little bit more comfortable for the students to discuss the topic. Then they switch roles and the people who are observing participate and the people who participated first then score their partner. The opening question is, why does the author think stupidity is important in scientific research? I'll open that up for um, anyone to begin. Support your ideas with evidence from the reading. Uh, Choosing a text for the Socratic seminar is very important. It needs to be something that's not concrete, like just fact-based. It needs to be something where there's um, some ambiguity so that they um, have something to talk about and try to understand better. Um, it also needs to be a text that's written a little bit above their reading level to challenge them um, to think harder so that they have room to grow. He says, the more comfortable we become with being stupid, the deeper we will wade into the unknown and the more likely we are to make big discoveries. I guess he's saying that the more that we don't know, the more mistakes we'll make, but that's a way to learn new things from what we're doing wrong or right. Does the rest of you agree? I also agree. It says um, in the middle of paragraph 7, it says science involves confronting our absolute <coughs> stupidity, and it says um, to push our way into the unknown. It helps push our way into the unknown. You know like that Kung Fu Kid movie where he's like, oh, how are you supposed to learn Kung Fu when your cup is already full with knowledge? It's like <laughs> making yourself ignorant to be able to see things from new eyes. Good. What else? One of the things that happens in a Socratic seminar is that there's a long pause and uncomfortable wait time. And that for the teacher, it's, it's easy to jump in and try to, to take over. And sometimes you need to sit back and let that happen and let the kids kind of be in that and get over it and start to talk anyway. Did you have any questions about like things you didn't understand that you want to bring out? When you're calling yourself stupid, it's basically like a put down. And I think when they say stupid, they mean um, not having up the knowledge of something, so being like clueless on the topic. But when you know something, then you have the knowledge, so you're not stupid. So, yeah. Marcus, you had brought up something early on that would fit in beautifully right here. I was, I was asking, what is the author referring to when he asks, I mean, when he describes predictively stupid and what is the other one? Relatively, Relatively stupid. With productive stupidity, you have to not want to learn. That's where it says. It's hard to know what your students understand and what they don't understand. And sometimes in these in these conversations, they can they have a chance to learn from their peers. And the students love them. They want to do them, and that's worth getting over that initial hump of where you know we don't really know what we're doing and we're all feeling uncomfortable. I think relative stupidity, as it says in paragraph seven is when um, other students actually read the material and you don't. 
Meaning like, you just don't even try, you know, even try to like, get something right. Yeah, I think he was kind of going for, kind of like everyone like, demos themselves to like a baseline so that everyone is the same, so that no one is like threatened by anyone else. That's why I sort of felt he meant by relative stupidity. In, in science, what would it be to be productively stupid? Where are we pushing ourselves to in science to where we're... By the end of the seminar, I like to have a chance for questions where they're able to share their own opinions. Kids who are maybe afraid to say something at the beginning, they can add on to someone else's opinion or paraphrase someone else's opinion. And it also gives everyone a chance to get points for the Socratic seminar. I was going to end with, do you think stupid is the best word? And you can tell me why or why not. Do you want to start? Okay, I think um, being curious and open-minded could be another word. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, I think it's stupid is a good word to use because the author, not, like, he's not trying to change the word, though. But he, a lot of people say, like, I'm stupid, though, not changing the word, so. So you think it's a good I assess them both for their participation in the Socratic seminar and also for what they gained from it. I do grade them on how often they contribute and also they're listening and that they're being polite and respectful and doing those sorts of things. So can I have a raise of hand um, for everybody that feels like you did get a deeper understanding of the article from doing this Socratic seminar? And everybody participated in the seminar, which doesn't always happen, so I, I really <coughs> appreciate that. And I thought it was nice to see you inviting other people into the conversation. So I want to thank you guys for that as well. You, you really brought, you brought it today. So can we give ourselves a round of applause?